Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please stand to salute the flag? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to the June 18th, 2018 Zoning Subcommittee. Uh, on this Sony subcommittee, we're going to address the following um, issues that are at hand. Uh, first and foremost would be 18140-CZ18-05, and I'm going to amend that with 18-157 to incorporate them both within this uh, conversation as they're dealing with the uh, zoning amendment relative to duplexes and heights within a 100-year floodplain, as well as a motion presented by myself, Council Rotondo, the Council order a public hearing on ordinance amending zoning the City of Riviera relative to townhomes. Um, if I could get Frank Stringy to uh, come to the podium for a second, I'd greatly appreciate it. And as I'm as Frank has come to the podium, I would like to also point out, Frank, one of the things that I'd like to amend within this uh, particular zoning is to remove LI uh, from the um, the table of uses in which uh, townhouse dwellings uh, cannot uh, be built there, period. And I'd like to put no there as part of this uh, zoning change. I just I don't see the purpose in putting townhomes in zoned areas where light industry is, contrary to hyperbole that's been put out there in the public. And um, so that would eliminate any idea of any type of townhomes in any light industry, area, light industry areas such as the marina down at uh, Ned Gibson Park, or for that matter, uh, elsewhere within the city. The uh, other amendment that I'd, I'd like to make is that we just maintain it with an RA and RB so that it can uh, be consistent. And when I take a look at the, um, the Patriot property zoning, I take a look at the land use throughout the city, it's pretty consistent that uh, in RA and RB it's mixed and the townhomes are allowed or have been in both places. However, the lot size is, uh, you better take a look at this, because. Townhouses are not allowed in the RA district. Right, no, but, uh, but you've got places where, where you have them as, I'll give you an example, on uh, Essex Street, is that RA or RB? That's RB. It is RB. Yeah. And what about down by um, Sigourney Street? RB. The only RA districts that exist in the city, Riverside, Point of Pines, Oak Island, those three areas. Single family homes only. All right, then that's easy enough. Frank, is it North Riviera? North Riviera is an RA1, that's a, that's a single family district also, yes. And they have townhomes up there too, They're right off of Salem Street. Uh, they do because it was, the sections of Salem Street of his own neighborhood business, which allow townhouses. That's right, too. That's the Maui's. That's yeah. right. Thank you. And uh, Williamsburg Square. That's an old one right across from the, quar the old quarry. Mm -hmm. So why would we only allow it in just one zoned area? Because the RB district is a, is a single and two-family district. Two-family district. And it's, it's the largest district in the city. And RA? RA is only single family homes allowed, RA. So your RB district allows for two family homes. So what do In we do with those houses that are down at the Pines that are uh, two families that are being converted into condos? I'm, I'm not aware of. Um, I am, Winton, um, down on Rice. Matter of fact, two of them are up on Airbnb right now. I can pull them up on, on my phone. So I'm not aware of that. Uh, that. That I am aware of. There are only there are a few homes in the Point of Pines that are grandfathered and his two families. On the Linway, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, the corner of um, 
Harrington and, um, and Linway is a two-family, sold as a two-family, zoned as a two-family. There's a three-family that is also down right in front of the uh, fire station. Yes. That, that's also RA. Well, so there are a few homes that, like I said, were grandfathered More than a few. In. More than a few. I can count them off the top of my head. I walk the streets. I know yeah. them. It's not saying that they're legal. And we're eliminating more and more use. So, there so we're going to make sold. people pull. We're going to make people remove their two families that have been there for 50 years. Is that what you're telling me? In some cases, yes, because not, if it was built prior that's, to 1929, that's, that's, it's it's illegal too. If it was built after that, zoning did not allow. Well, it for I'm two sorry families. to tell you, my friend, but the uh, the building department here has allowed it to happen for the past 50 years. I've been going to these people's houses for the past 15. And that just seems like a very untoward and unfair thing. I can thing. tell you, the building department has been, have been chasing these down, one by one, having people remove kitchens and illegal units. And I think Councilor Powell's going to attest to that. It's in his ward. That's correct. I, I can no, just I mean, cite one off the top of my head. On, uh, of course you can. I can cite them off the top of my head in Ward yeah. 4 as well. However, however the, it the, doesn't make it fair to the homeowner that's been there for the past 30 years. My concern, my concern is, Mr. Chairman, if I may, that when Councilor Rizzo was Chairman of Zoning, he and I worked to, elimin to uh, eliminate by special permit uh, two families in the Point of Pines, the Grove section of Oak Island and Riverside. And, and this... this uh, I got no I'm problem in, with that. I'm just... I got no problem with that. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how, how do we help these people that have these two and three family uh, properties still? That's what I'm trying to talk about. I, I have no idea. Exactly. That, that's my that's point. A, yeah. All I know is the zoning does not permit it right now. Yeah, no, I agree. So, I mean, do you have an answer as to how to help these people other than basically screw them? When they, were, when they purchased the homes, they were probably... They weren't, they, told, a, uh, they weren't told they should have done their research with the building department and found out what legal occupancy is. Well, uh, guaranteed, if you research these houses now, you'll find that legal occupancy is a single family, a lot of them. There are a few that are two families down The there. building department has a poor, poor history of maintaining documentation on occupancy, period. End of story. Well, the FBI will tell you that, who did the, who, who did the DPW um, audit with the state auditor. That you have really, really poor record keeping within the city. Well, that's so, what we have I mean, to go by. I'm sorry? That's what we have to go by. Well, I, I know, and that doesn't help the people that live in the city. However, the amendment that, that, that I, that this the Planning Review Committee submitted, is for duplex homes in the RB district. Right now, dupl two families are allowed in the RB district, side by side units with a single entrance. Mm -hmm. They're ugly. We want to give some flexibility to design and allow two family homes side by side with separate entrances. As long as we can have some flexibility in design uh, with a setback from each unit. And that's, that's the crux of this. And amendment. separate entrances would be fine as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've seen the side-by-side -side two families that are being built. Yeah, they look like. Yeah. There's, there's really nothing much to it. And the other section is, deals with height. Right now you have, say, 8,000 square feet of grade enough to build up to 35 feet. Mm -hmm. We want to reduce that to 5,000 square feet to allow it to go up to 35 feet. Again, allowing flexibility in design and, and more pitch in the roof line. So those two, and the third one basically uh, allowing, so if you want to put a duplex side by side in the RB district, you need at least 6,000 square feet and 60 foot frontage. Because you need a larger lot to do that, to accommodate that. And the other, the other one deals with uh, building in the floodplain. Right now, the first floor in the floodplain is basically unusable. That's why I want to put the elevation so that's 35 that's feet. That's correct. So a lot of people use that empty space for garage, but they're getting penalized because a garage is considered a story. Right. So there's one story that you can't, that's not habitable. So they're only allowed mm -hmm. one and a half stories above that, which is not fair. So. We, we come across this time and time again in the 100-year floodplain when there's new construction or, or reconstruction. And we have to send them to the ZBA. How would you feel about uh, front yards uh, setbacks, of one unit versus the other, by a five-foot minimum so that they're basically staggered? You know, like they have in Beacon Hill or places like that. I mean, I don't see how that's that would in be. This, that's a, a 
requirement of this duplex dwelling yep. in the RB district. You have to have a five foot setback between each unit, at least. It's a stagger. And that's the crux of the uh, the practical amendments that we And do you have a problem with us removing it out of uh, the light industry district? No problem at all. All right. No. no. I don't know why residential would go. I'm uh, just, it's uh, part of the special permit process there. I just think it's crazy to have it. Yeah, I agree. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'd like to ask the, chair, uh, the uh, Frank a question. In the light industrial or limited industrial, whichever phrase you want to use, uh, as a matter of right now, down on Riverside, they could build what, three, two family houses on that property? Is that correct? Or? Yes. Limited, limited industrial does allow for two families. Yeah. Okay. But by special so, permit, and I want to remove it. No, I don't think they need a no, special two permit. Families for by that. right. Townhouses right. by special permit. But so if you want to remove it, that's there, fine too. They have to subdivide it into, um, um, I believe in the LI district, the minimum lot size is um, 15,000 square feet. Yeah. So you could probably get three, three. family homes exactly. on that lot. That's, and, and they can do with a special permit from the city council 15 or 16 townhouses. townhouses. Am I correct? By special uh, units of townhouses, parts of townhouses. Right. Thank you. So, why don't we, I mean, are we able to, Madam uh, Clerk, are we able to address that with under purview here, even though it's not, I don't think we can. No, not, the one that's been already advertised, we had a public hearing on it, that's the one we, we can yeah, We can only deal on. with this. And that has nothing to do with townhouses. All right. So. I mean, if you want to work on another zoning amendment, I'd be glad to work with you to, to deal yeah, with Yeah, let's that do town, that. Townhouse issue in the LI district. Yeah, so that we remove the two families out of the LI district altogether. Yeah. As far as this is concerned, I'd like to remove LI out of this uh, this uh, table of use altogether and put down no. I mean, I, I think we can do that as it's within this purview. Not under this current amendment. Um, we we'll have to hold a new public hearing, I believe. We would have to hold a new public hearing. Then we should hold a new public hearing, Madam Clerk, so that we can remove this altogether. I would, I would like to work with you on that so we... Yeah, so let's do that. So, Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just, just for some clarity uh, on the amendments, uh, just curious on the, the entrances. So this would allow the uh, townhouses to be built with separate entrances on, on either side, probably? Not a townhouse, a duplex, which is just two units side by side. Correct. Two, One offset by the other. Right yep. now it's allowed as of right, but there's no offset and you can't have two doors. It's so only you have one to have single. one and it's a common entrance, correct? One common entrance, the vestibule, and you walk yeah. into one unit and another right. unit. So, but this, this change would allow them to have two separate entrances? That's correct. Okay, thank you. So uh, what did we uh, end up with this? So at this point, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're pretty much maintaining everything that is within your document. That's correct, yeah. Uh, we can't remove the LI at this point because no. we have to deal with it at a different time as it wasn't advertised. Yes. I thought we could, it's too bad. Um, can you read the actual document, please, Madam Clerk? So this ordinance was submitted by a site plan review, an ordinance further amending the zoning ordinances of the city of Revere, and this was also, this, was, this ordinance was we had a public hearing, the city council held a public hearing on it at the last meeting. Section one, section 17.24.010, footnote Y of the revised ordinances of the city of Revere is hereby amended by deleting the entry 8,000 square feet and replacing it with 5,000 square feet. Section two, section 17.16.040 of the revised ordinances of the city of Revere is hereby amended by changing the entry for dwelling duplex in the RB district from no to yes, asterisk, asterisk. <clears throat> section three, section 17.16.040 of the revised ordinances of the city of Revere is hereby amending, hereby amended by adding footnote, asterisk, asterisk at the bottom of the table of uses, which shall read the following. Dwelling duplex may only be allowed within the RB district on lots that are 6,000 square feet and greater, 
and have at least 60 foot, 60 foot frontage. Dwelling duplex shall have an offset of at least five feet in depth between each unit and the design shall be approved by the site plan review committee. Section four, section 17.24.040 of the revised ordinances of the city of Revere is hereby amended by deleting the entry 50 feet in the first sentence and replacing it with 60 feet. And section five, section 17.24.010 of the revised zoning ordinances of the city of Revere is hereby amended by adding the footnote Z under maximum stories in the RA and RB districts. Footnote Z reads, all dwellings within the RA and RB districts, which are located within the FEMA 100 year floodplain, will be allowed three stories only if the first story is a garage. Can we put in three, th three stories equaling, but not greater than 35 feet? Well, that because that way it just changes the entire, we so don't have to go problem. back and deal with that again. I know. In the that's the problem. The RA district the maximum height is, is 30 feet. So we'd have to amend that and allow... Because uh, three stories could be 30 feet, but it's not 35. No. And that's state law. No. So you... We can put down 35 feet within this amendment. We yeah, can add we 35 feet from the mean... Was it the mean floodplain... How would you no, word it? From whatever the, the, the average grade of the property is. The average grade of the floodplain. Measure the elevation. So the amendment being offered for under section five uh, for footnote Z, all dwellings within the RA and RB districts, which are located within the FEMA 100 year floodplain, will be allowed three stories and 35 feet, only if the first story is a garage. Mr. Chairman, could I ask a question? And I'm sorry to, to jump in, yeah, um, go ahead. but I, I, I just want to be certain here. I, I know we wanted some clarification um, by talking about dwellings being duplexes or being townhouses and trying to define or trying to correct an issue that that I think our city planner and 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 some of us had issues with, and I, I understand that. But what I'm a little bit confused about, I mean, the height, you know, the height we're talking about in the hundred-year floodplain, that makes perfect sense um, because the houses, if you keep them at that 30 foot level, they don't look right, as particularly if you have water flowing. You know, if we're building in the floodplain and you want to allow for, for water to flow through, you're not, you know, you're not building a house that would be a credit to that neighborhood. So I'm all for that. What I'm a little bit confused about, and maybe somebody, whether it's you, Mr. Chairman, or, or Frank Stringy, uh, our planner, can help me out. Are we looking to change the ability for a developer or somebody to go in and build now a two-family where it has been a one-family no. for some time. We're no. not, we're not, we're not no, looking not to do that. Not even close. Here. Okay. I just want some clarification on that because in, in as, as I look through 11A and, and uh, 11B and, and, um, and 12A, it just seems as though there's some conflicting information here that I'm not processing. In fact, um, in talking with the Ward 5 City Council here, Council Powers, we, we were both of that same mindset that it looked like this was opening the door to build two families down there. And I just want to be sure that's not the case. In correct? fact, Dan, um, one of the things that I want to do, and I thought I was able to insert tonight, but uh, we have to basically uh, put back out to uh, public, excuse me, to be, um, God, what's the word that I'm looking for? Public hearing? Public hearing, thank you. My fatigue from last night. But anyway, it has to be put out for public hearing is I want to remove LI 
uh, from the table of uses so that no two family can be built in certain areas. And there's certain areas that I want to ensure that, you know, it doesn't take place. I think we need to tighten up, you know, our, <coughs> our residential zoning. In fact, uh, tonight I have a, a motion before the council looking to stop uh, and ask for a moratorium for four months. I think we're overbuilding at this point. I think the city is, uh, you, you know, inundated with rats and so forth, and we need to take a pause. But that said, when it comes to the zoning issue at hand, I think uh, we need to basically um, take a look at the LI district and remove it totally from the, the use as a town home, or for that matter, for two family. I mean, Mr. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Well, of course. Uh, if the square footage was reduced in the RA district, uh, and a person had 6,000 uh, square feet and uh, it was a 50-foot frontage, at that point, they could build, if it was reduced to 2,000 uh, square feet, they could build a duplex. Uh, no. Uh, no. What do you mean no? No. You need, uh, this is only in the RB district, two-family district in the city. Okay. Doesn't affect the RA district. A duplex, which is a two-family. Well, this would have affected Riverside, wouldn't it have? No, you're confusing. There's, there's, the it's, ordinance it's that we had a separate. public hearing on was from the Site Plan Review okay. Committee. Uh, there was another motion submitted that's the one I'm by a counselor about. who dealt with townhouses, which that, is confusing everybody. That's what I'm talking about. No, that's, that's not it. before us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council Zambudo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Frank, I just want to clear up in my own head. You, you fully endorse every bit of this uh, ordinance change, is that correct? The one that was advertised that we had a public hearing on, yes. Well, you just changed something tonight. Is that included or...? Yeah, that was just a, a minor change to the height. But you're, right now, you're comfortable with all of this? Yes, yes. Okay. With the one that, that we had a public hearing on. Now, there's, yeah. there's another one before you that I'm not comfortable with. I, I, I thought so, yeah. yeah. Okay, because okay. um, I just wanted to know where we're at with this and obviously I trust your judgment on this, that you're not going to do something that's going to create a, uh, a group of these things exploding. And no. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Can we read the motion and just... Uh, I'm going to put my motion on file. 18157 is to be placed on file. and then what has been amended accordingly by Frank, yep. yep. So, now we're on to either 18-045 or 18-165. With special permit. <clears throat> Next item in the zoning subcommittee agenda is 18-165, St. Jean's Credit Union on behalf of 151 VFW Parkway, LLC, the Joe. duly formed Delaware Limited Liability Company, with its usual place of business, care of Win Stanley Enterprises, LLC, 150 Baker Ave, Suite 303, Concord, Mass., seeking permission from the Revere City Council to construct more than one principal non-residential structure on a single lot to enable the appellant to construct a 4,500 square foot commercial structure at 171 VFW Parkway, Revere, Mass. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Joseph Cotogio, 1 Sprague Street, Revere, representing the applicant, as you've uh, heard, uh, seeking permission for the construction of a uh, two-unit uh, commercial, separate commercial structure at uh, Wonderland Marketplace, which presently houses a uh, strip mall um, uh, within a uh, very large parking area. Um, briefly, uh, the project has been submitted uh, on uh, two separate occasions, at once initially and then as a follow-up with site plan review. Uh, site plan uh, required uh, that uh, the application be presented to the ZBA um, for the allowance of uh, uh, a variance on uh, stacking of cars in the driveway, which they allowed. Um, they saw fit to allow it, uh, primarily because the, the cars are not stacking uh, in or near any um, public way. They're all within the parking area um, in which this uh, proposed structure will go. Uh, there was also a previous uh, uh, variance for overall parking spaces, which took into account this proposed construction. 
Um, we were also required to file before the Revere Conservation Commission, uh, received an order of conditions from them um, that uh, should be available as well uh, for viewing, and uh, we're required to present this application before you or before the City Council, uh, which has uh, since been submitted to you um, for the special permit to allow the separate structure. Uh, this is primarily uh, to be used by St. Jean's Credit Union. Uh, St. Jean's has already have a, uh, has a presence in Revere, and they are excited about uh, expanding that presence uh, in a new uh, facility um, to uh, offer uh, citizens uh, uh, a wide variety of uh, uh, financial options and, and uh, services. Um, the uh, uh, applicant has prepared uh, and submitted to prior um, uh, venues uh, uh, traffic studies, uh, water flow studies. We have large scale uh, plans available to any council who wishes them or copies of the traffic studies uh, as well. And we're seeking uh, approval for the special permit. Anybody on the um, committee have something to ask of uh, council? I only have one, I only have one question uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to go back to the stacking lanes, I understand that the minimum requirement would normally be 200, like 200 feet, but correct. they don't, but they don't have that 200 feet. There were, I mean, what, the, what will they have available <clears throat> as far as stacking goes? And I understand that it's not on a public roadway, so it, right. Like, well, I'm even, even more so, the, the the city, as I uh, discussed with the ZBA, uh, does not make it, uh, does not differentiate with regard to drive-throughs. So the same requirement for a bank drive-through is the same as a coffee shop drive-through or any other uh, drive-through, even though there are various um, uh, volumes of uses. Uh, they also uh, design to prevent cars from going into uh, a public way off the street, uh, backing into where a flow of traffic or even on street parking would be affected. Um, the, uh, the, the distance, I, I believe, uh, we do have the 200 square feet, uh, the 200 feet, if we were to take both sides or the, ang or the corner, um, we have about half of that with regard to where you officially measure. But the difference here is, is that we are not adjacent to a public way. The structure is totally within a parking lot, so all cars that will be going through that drive through and, and stacking in that stacking lane will be within a parking area. They will not have any opportunity, no matter how deep they go, to stack out into traffic. Um, so th the answer would be the, the, the width of the uh, uh, back, uh, which I believe um, it might be 80 feet or... or uh, which I think like, in an establishment like that is probably plenty. I mean, for it, banking, you're yes. not talking about a Dunkin' Donuts or anything like that. Exactly. I mean, you're talking about a bank. Right. Okay. Exactly. I, I, but I, I just didn't know. It didn't, it, you know, I couldn't find it in the, in the special permit application where it, where it said how many feet they actually did have. And it, I'm sure it's probably there somewhere, but I just I, I couldn't, I couldn't it, locate it. It runs so. along the back of the building, but then can also go along the side, um, okay. which would meet the 200 square foot, but it isn't allowed the, the way this, the, the uh, ordinance is written. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Council Zambudo, did you wish to have a question? No. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, just a point of information, so as not to confuse the general public that may be watching this meeting, uh, that project is uh, in the shopping center, am I correct? Not in Wonderland as we know it. Yeah, it, it's the marketplace. Yes, exactly. in the, shop, not in the, the shopping dog center, track, not at the dog track. No. Thank you very much. No, not at all. No further questions? All in favor? Councilor Zambudo? Are you in favor or? Actually, I should do a pose first, right? You're doing a car. I, I didn't know we were voting on this. I know. Wait a minute. No, we're just going to accept it as findings from site plan review. That's all. I'm in favor of that. And I'm going to put 18157 on file. Correct. 
Correct. And that should conclude the uh, zoning board. Uh, no, shall I say yes? Uh, I got board. one question, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Uh, on the um, St. Jean matter there, uh, are we, are we going to put that in for a vote or? Uh, Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. No further business. This will conclude the uh, zoning subcommittee. Thank you.